This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at this interesting paper which talks about how you can reconstruct images from human brain activity. So basically it's about reconstructing an image which you looked at from your brain activity. Okay, so how do they do it over here? So the thing is that this is not something new, right? There has been a lot of research previously on how can you, uh, you know, reconstruct images from human brain activity. Okay. So you have papers like this, which talks about visual image reconstruction from human brain activity using multi-scale local image decoders, right? Deep image reconstruction from human brain activity. So there are a lot of uh, earlier research works and what is the modality which they use? The modality they use is functional MRI, which measures the activity of small changes in blood flow that occur with brain activity. So it can be used to examine which parts of brain are handling critical functions, evaluate the effects of stroke or other disease, right? So this is functional uh, MRI, okay? Uh, some more details are present over here. I will link this particular uh, paper as well. Um, so you can check that out. This is an overview of functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI, right? Uh, yeah, so there are multiple applications of fMRI, fMRI data. So what these people have done is that this is a research work from University of, Os basically Osaka University and NICT Japan, right? So what have these authors done, right? What they have done is that they have proposed a method based on diffusion model, right? Stable diffusion basically to reconstruct images from human brain activity, which is obtained via fMRI, fMRI images. Okay. So what they do is that uh, they rely on this stable diffusion model. Okay. So uh, what they do over here is that um, if you have a stable diffusion model just from your MRI signals, okay? So this is an image which has been presented to a user, right? Uh, to a subject whose fMRI was captured when this person is looking at this particular image. Now what they have done is that from the fMRI signals, they have mapped regions of the signals two various things like an image encoder and a semantic decoder, right? Uh, and based on that, they use stable diffusion to get a reconstructed image. So what they are saying over here is that these are the presented images, right? To the user, to the subjects basically. And these are the reconstructed images from the fMRI images, right? So from parts of fMRI images. So that's the idea over here right so how do they do it okay so this is your normal uh, stable diffusion model okay where uh, you have an uh, you know basically uh, you have text to image right so what happens is that you have an original image which goes through diffusion process and then you have the text based on the text conditioning you have uh, a denoising unit and based on that it obtains a final image okay final image is generated Okay, so what they've done over here is that they have actually mapped certain parts of the fMRI signals, okay, to, you know, this image uh, representation and text representation. So they have trained a linear model to map fMRI signals to your, say, uh, you know, components of stable diffusion. That's what they've done over here. Okay, the detail is present in the paper over here. So what they are saying is that first we predict a latent representation of the presented image X from fMRI signals within early visual cortex. Okay, so that is the uh, this thing. So the first part. Okay, then this particular image uh, latent representation is processed by a decoder of an autoencoder to produce a coarse decoded image. XZ. XZ was then processed by encoder of a auto encoder added noise through diffusion process. Okay. So the latent text representation from fMRI signals, basically this C, uh, was from say within the higher ventral 
विजुअल कॉर्टेक्स ओके सो नॉइस एडेड टू द रिप्रेजेंटेशन जेड टी ऑफ द कोर्स इमेज एंड डी कोड एट सी वेर यूज यूज टू इनपुट टू द डी नॉइसिंग यूनिट टू प्रोड्यूस यूर जेड सी फाइनली जेड सी वॉज यूज एज एन इनपुट टू द डी कोडिंग मॉड्यूल ऑफ द इनकोडर टू प्रोड्यूस द फाइनल रिकन्स्ट्रक्टेड इमेज तो बेसिकली इन अ स्टेबल डिफ्यूशन मॉडल वॉट दे से इज दैट जेड इज द लेटेंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द ओरिजिनल इमेज कंप्रेस बाई द ऑटो एनकोडर C as the latent latent representation of the text, Z C as the generated latent representation of Z modified by the model with C conditioned on C. Okay, so they have actually mapped fMRI signals, right, from different regions of the brain to say first is your uh, image. Basically, this uh, linear mapping is for uh, linear model is mapping this particular fMRI signals. to the latent representation of the image which the person saw which the subject saw okay the another region of the brain for mapping to the latent text representation okay now based on that uh, you can actually now uh, get an output from a stable diffusion model so that is what they have done over here okay that's what they have explained over here so the first thing is that as i said latent representation within early visual cortex because early visual cortex corresponds to visual signals in the brain okay similarly from higher ventral visual cortex is for the language part so they are mapping your brain signals from these regions to say the image part and text part that is how they could actually reconstruct the image using stable diffusion okay so the, this is the visualization of the denoising and uh, denoising process conditioned with the human brain activity so this is the uh, internal process of stable diffusion with decoding uh, encoding models of brain activity so here is your uh, you know mapping of these different regions of brain to say one is the image uh, par, the latent vector image latent vector z uh, to the text latent vector c over here that is what is explained over here and when combined that and given to this diffusion process and stable diffusion basically you get your reconstructed image that's what uh, they are saying over here okay details are present over here in the paper but the idea is this uh, so i would not really uh, go into the details so they have actually tried to map the whole brain voxel wise encoding models basically from the uh, from the fmri images to identify which regions corresponds to what and then from that you know they have actually tried to uh, construct the stable diffusion model okay further details are actually present in the paper uh, there are some interesting figures over here right um, so where they talk about uh, you know given some ground truths what was the kind of images which were generated for each of these uh, signals from each of these reconstructed images for a single subject using just uh, you know zc so this is based on the text part of the signal right uh, this is the original uh, you know image part of it and then how when this was conditioned you could gen generate this image so that is what they are shown over here the three parts uh, the latent vector z uh, you know based on text the latent vector for text and this is conditioned on text produced by stable diffusion right by the diffusion model that's what is shown over here okay um then there are some uh, this is reconstructed in for all subjects from the same image yeah that's what uh, this figure 3 is this one but figure 4 Ah, uh, let's go to figure four. Is uh, what does it show? Reconstructed images from all subjects for the same image. All images were generated using Z C. Okay, so this is the thing. So the original image which was shown, the ground truth was this. These are the reconstructed images. So the reconstructed images are quite close in this case, right? But in this case, the reconstructed images are not close. Okay, here also the reconstructed images are not uh, close, except for maybe over here. right so they say that this could be because of the data quality so the subjects 1 and subject 07 uh, decoding uh, subject 1 had a high data quality in the fmri whereas subject 07 had low uh, 
you know, data quality. So they said that could be the reason that for subject 7, the reconstruction has been poor across these images. Whereas for subject 1, it is better. Okay, but here, I don't think it is that good, but still. Okay, so this was that example. Um, they also have more examples in Appendix B. Where is Appendix B now? Let's go to Appendix B if it is available over here. No. Okay. No, in this paper I did not get it. Okay. Let me go over here quickly see if the Appendix is available here. Let's see if some examples, some more examples are there. No. Okay. So currently we have to just leave with these examples which they have shown over here. Okay. So what they say is that uh, their contributions are, they can demo, uh, this simple framework can reconstruct high resolution images from brain activity with high semantic fidelity without the need for training or fine tuning of complex deep generative models. Okay. They are not fine tuning the stable diffusion model at all. All they are doing is that this linear, um, they have created linear models to map this fMRI signals to this text vector and latent vector. Okay. So there is no fine tuning of your stable diffusion models. Then they also quantitatively inter interpret each component of this latent diffusion model from a neuroscience perspective by mapping specific components to distinct brain regions. Okay. So basically this mapping of this particular region to this text and this particular region to image over here. That's what they are talking about here. We present an objective interpretation of how text to image conversion process implemented by an latent diffusion model incorporates the semantic information expressed by the conditional text while at the same time maintaining the appearance of the original image. Okay. So what they say is that uh, this way of this is an interpretation of how a latent uh, diffusion model generates images while maintaining the semantics from text. So this is an interesting paper. I will link this particular paper uh, so you can also read it. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.